I haven't got time for a long ride. Is it even worth going out? Martin, you silly sausage, of course it is. We're going to be talking about regular and shorter rides this week. Can short rides be good? Can that be true? Well, let's find out on, on the, the Dirt, Dirt Shed, Shed Show. Show. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and... Myself, is? Rich Payne. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Um, and now, Rich, how are you? I'm very good, thanks, dude. Very good. It's nice to be in the shed. This is actually the first yeah. time I've been in here since I was put on some ghastly uh, turbo trainer ride against the Brownlee brothers and Nino Scherter and others, so it's nice not to be in here sweating. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually uh, a good point that you've raised right off the bat because how long was that ride that you did in there when you were sweating it out against those guys? Right. That one was a short but intense one. That was, I think it was only 35 minutes. Wow, there hell. you go, right? So uh, our discussion this week, okay, is about short rides because we're all getting back into riding after yep. lockdown and we're well into it now. People have gone back to work and suddenly they're trying to fit riding into another busy life, you know, mm. because we've been used to having a little bit more time. So are the shorter rides really worth doing? That's the big question um, that we want to answer today. And Rich, you've done Every, I mean, you've done all kinds of riding, yes. downhill, four cross, enduro, you've done cross country at an international level. So you're the man to argue for maybe the longer ride. And I'm going to set up the uh, argument for going for the little short spin. What do you think? Mate, I think that's a valid argument, especially as I came off the bat of doing 120 miles on my mountain bike the other day. Yeah, yeah, your longest day, the summer solstice so, ride, yes. was that, was, what was that, what was that like for you? Is that one of the longest rides you've ever done? And how oh, long was it? Even halfway through it was the longest ride I'd ever done and the longest time in the saddle, <laughs> like continuous time in the saddle, let alone the entire <laughs> ride itself. So I like to think that, oh, uh, yeah, man. I've got a good comparison on this subject. Yeah, and I mean, so what were the advantages of going for an incredibly long ride? I mean, what did you get out of that that you don't get out of a normal ride? A sore bottom, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think this, I think this argument's going to be easy to win. Um, I mean, the short, the short ride, and when I say a short ride, I'm thinking an hour or less. Yeah. I mean, and, and you could go way less, yeah. but I think at least an hour, hour and less. Now, I'm a good person to argue for this because I've never really ridden for much longer than that, really. I always just saw I've got like an hour of a lot of energy in me and then I'm kind of cooked. Mm. Then, then that's me done. Um, and I think, I think going out for a short ride, here's my argument, my Rich. Okay, see what on. you think. Let's see what you got. It's, it's fun because it's shorter and you can just enjoy yourself. Okay. Um, you've got the advantage of kind of like the high intensity interval training hit kind of thing because yeah. you can really go hard because you know there's a time limit and you can basically gauge yourself for it, but you can really go for it. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can break it down into nice little sessions. So it can come become a bit more of a technique based ride rather yeah. than just pure fitness. So I think it's got everything in it that I want from mountain biking. So why do I need to go longer? Some valid points, mate, some valid points. Okay, let's talk longer rides. So you could you could argue longer rides, good. If you're trying to get like your cardio up, you know, some fat burning, yeah. if you're trying to lose weight, then a longer ride's probably gonna be a bit more suited for you. Yeah, you could say yeah. um, distance covered. So if you're looking to get some big miles in and explore some new places, you're not going to do that yeah, in an I guess hour. the views, yeah, the views and the peacefulness mm. of being out in the yeah. great outdoors. Yeah. But I mean, I, in five minutes I can be in the great outdoors. I mean, I'm lucky where I live. I've got some fantastic country around me. But, you know, I mean, I guess in a city it's harder. You need to do a bit of a ride out to get yeah. out to the, to the countryside. True. But think about your local park. Everyone's got a pretty local park. Yep. I mean, there's trees there. Trees have got nice little gnarly roots. I think if you go out, spend half an hour playing around on some corners and some roots. I mean, I'm a trials based background, so I'm a bit mm. more used to that sort of like very local training session. Like this um, much in space. The, like the local car park. Yeah, literally no space at all. But you can do so much on just just a slight, you know, cambered turn, and just keep doing it, really session and get the skills down. I think that's a very valuable ride myself. I think yeah. you get a lot from it. Yeah, I d don't get me wrong. Those are some perfectly valid points. 
I'm not going to say otherwise because I do both. But you know, yeah. just think when you're doing those long rides as well, you can like crack out the app or the maps if you're a bit old school. You can get delve into all the planning side of things. You know, oh. you get out there, you spend all day in the great outdoors. You're not worrying about, oh, I've only got 45 minutes. I better crack on home or the missus is going to get angry or something like that. You can just enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can. You can settle into a big, long day, but I guess it's a uh, variety is the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. It's to mix it up. But if you're thinking that you've got a, a short lunch break where you can get out on a bike, um, then do it. Go for yes. it because it isn't going to stop you doing those longer rides and it's definitely worth it. Um, there's some more coming up in the show a bit later on where I go out for a little short ride uh, and uh, test my bowhead out in I Martin's know. mission. Um, but for now, I think we've discussed that enough, Rich. Let's yep. go to the news. Let's do it. Welcome to this week's news and we've got some great news to kick it off. RockShock have just dropped their brand new Zeb fork it's a single crown fork it's a 38 mil stanchion fork that's bigger than their rock shock boxes the ones that all those world cup racers really use it's bigger than that that's massive makes four different ranges in this fork and take a look at this you've got the ultimate you've got the select plus you've got select and then you've just got their base model fork now the travel of these forks starts from 160 millimeters of travel all the way up to 190 millimeters of travel that's a hell of a lot of travel on the front end it's perfect for all those enduro races all those bike park users or just a dude that just wants to get shred his trails you can change between 160 or 190 mil travel depending on what you want that's a good looking fork i love that top crown look at it slick Evil Bikes have just brought out this new bike. Look at this. This is the Evil Reckoning bike. Now, they're still using the Delta suspension system. Still looks super complicated to me, but it works for them. This has 166 mil of travel. It's a 29er, but they've got lower and longer geo travel. So they are sticking with the times. But look at it. I like that matte orange color. Looks cool. But being 29er and a 166 mil travel bike, long slack, that machine looks like it can go downhill very capably. I like this bike, it looks cool. Right, last week I said that Leger will be the starting of the World Cup series. Now, <laughs> they have they have cancelled it again because uh, they, they can't work to uh, COVID guidelines, they can't work to it safely. Plus, the amount of people that will be going to the event far exceeds the maximum level of people that are allowed to go to an event. So they've decided to pull the plug on it, which is a shame. But we'll see what happens in the future. Not all is lost still. Not a race in Austria. Now, this is a very interesting one because racing didn't happen in Schladming in Austria. And Windmasters innovated this idea that actually took off. Basically, they spent a few days putting in some timed runs and having some fun at Schladming. Now, Windmasters went out there and uh, you should take a look at this video because it's pretty cool how this has happened. And it's great to see that there's not any racing happening. So, not another race. Very interesting take on this. I like it. Okay, before I end the news, last week I said that Sea Otter is cancelled for the year, but it's not fully cancelled because they're doing virtual challenges and also they're going to be doing a virtual trade show as well. Now, I did say they will be putting out some challenges. Now, if you go to www.seaotterplay.com, you will, you will get introduced to what I was talking about. Now, it's pretty interesting. You can enter this whole online extravaganza and take part in some events and also get to see what sea otter would have been like but it's going to be virtual this year okay one last thing gmbn shop we've got some great merch all on there now if you want to support the channel it's a great place to go and just look feast your eyes on stuff and it goes down to the smallest thing to a sticker you can buy stickers mugs cups water bottles jerseys T-shirts just like this one, my favorite one, and the green one, and you can just, all your support helps. Thank you very much. All right, let's crack on with the show. Okay, time for hacks and bodges, and Rich, I don't need to sing this week, because uh, check oh. this out. Nice. Oh my god. That is ace. Now, 
Now that was sent in from Kirsty, um, who is that is Kirsty's daughter singing, who's three years old, but I don't know her name. But thank you very much. It was a fantastic was. little very rendition. Very I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, our first hack or bodge this week, Rich. Check this out. It is from Matt. Um, he's made now. I I quite like this. Ooh. I think it's pretty cool. That's tidy, isn't it? At the end of the day, it is. At the end of the day, right? A bit of wood for a bash plate. It's going to work. Yeah. That is going to work. It's going to do the job. I mean, it's probably not the lightest thing in the world, but it's certainly not going to be that heavy. No, but it's pretty this cool. One. Eco friendly. Uh, yes. Recycling. And when you do smash yes. it off, it'll just rot away. Yes. <laughs> it's genius. <laughs> That's how like it. It's actually brilliant. Um, yeah, like that, Matt. You're in the running for a GMBN race top. Mm. Start getting excited. <laughs> um, next up, you're. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. How does this guy eat oh. his yogurts? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with your oh yogurt when you're out Lord. and about now? Oh my God, Andy, <laughs> you, what have you done? That is disgusting. That is the biggest that's whole, bodge. That's, that's, <laughs> that is the biggest bodge I've ever seen. <laughs> I've lost it on that one. <laughs> Man, that but, is unreal. If you look, I like how he's gone for comfort by wrapping a bit of electrical tape, like just, just where yeah. your finger yeah. would sit. Yeah. I've got a horrible feeling that Andy rode with this and he actually was like, you know what? That works pretty good. I'm on to something. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's Look got a fork the on the other side. That. Oh, man. That's, okay. That's a, that Andy, that's brilliant. Brilliantly bad. Brilliantly bad. Wow. Um, um, you set the bar. I can, almost, I can almost feel Matt with his wooden bash plate <laughs> going, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Um, right, next up. Oh, man, we've gone from the sublime, uh, from the ridiculous uh, to the sublime. Oh, Look wow, Look at this yes. trail tool. Sorry, but I'm still, Ooh, I, I, nice. I got a tear going on that last one. <laughs> John. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, John's, John's turned us around the other way because he he's gone, that's actually a really good trail tool. So you've got like your little, um, your little fork yeah. there for scraping the ground and then you've got a nice big ax edge. And you've got like the chopper edge. I know. Oh, that's clever. I like it? that. Yeah, oh, that's a that's a good um, one, isn't it? Actually, yeah. that's ideal. I wonder yeah. how long like the handle is, in... is to take it around with you, like on your backpack. Yeah, that's you? the thing. That's the thing. It's not very. A lot of people kind of hide their um, hide their trail tool in the tra in the woods themselves, yeah. don't they? Sort of hiding behind a particular tree yes. so they know where they are. Um, John is out in Melbourne in Australia, and he saved some money by making this uh, trail tool himself. <laughs> Now, we got to pick a winner this week, um, but it, I've got to say, it's a hot week. It's a hot week because the trail tool's really nice. <laughs> I'd like it myself. I like that, yeah. We've got, we've got An <laughs> Andy's, <laughs> Andy's Spork, and we've got, um, and we've got Matt. <laughs> Part Matt with a wooden bash plate. <laughs> Part of me oh, really wants decides. to give it to Andy, but I just, I don't think I can. I'm sorry, Andy, as great as a bodge, and, <laughs> a bodge that is. What way are you swaying, Mark? Um, I'd give it to Andy. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, but I, I think you're right. I think probably we shouldn't reward that kind of uh, behaviour. Maybe, maybe I think maybe we go with Matt right at the start there. I Wooden think bash Matt. plate. It's tidy. I, like, I liked you that it it would cycle. It recycles away. You know, yeah. I like that. Yeah, Matt. Congratulations, yeah, okay, Matt, mate. You're away. You're a winner. There's a GMBN race top on its way to you. So look out for an email. Congratulations. Yes. Now, if you've got a hack or a bodge, and just to prove it, um, Andy's given us the bodge of all bodges. So any bodge will do. Yeah. Send them in to our uploader and you could be in with a chance of winning a GMBN race top yep. next week. And we love seeing your stuff. So mm -hmm. please send it in. Um, right, next up in the show, we've got Fail or Sends to come and we've got the Bike Vault. We've got Martin's Mission. I'm going to update you on how I'm going on my way to EWS Glory. Um, and we've got, of course, what's coming up on the channel week. But let's start with a bit of medley of all your fails and all of your sends this week. Rich, press play.
fuck. Gosh, Mark, that was some uh, pretty epic fails or sends this week. It was. I wow. Uh, wow. How they survive sometimes, I do not know. But it's time for an update from you on Martin's mission, your road to EWS glory. How's it going? So this week on Martin's mission, uh, I'm going to try some technical riding on a slow speed, cambers, few rocks, few routes, just to challenge my perception of balance on the bike and where the wheels are going and what the grip's like. Just mess around. Um, I found some trees in the background here, got a nice gradient there. Um, it's quite loose. It's going to be hard to get the grip, which is something I need to learn. Um, it might help me sort of understand how switchbacks are going to work going up and down, because that's something I need to learn for EWS for sure. So uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a go, see what grip I've got uh, and learn a bit about riding this bike on technical terrain. What can it do? A little spot just like this can teach you so much about your riding because just by fumbling around on these little turns I'm learning so much about what I can do on this bike. The technical riding is where you're going to learn the little details that are going to keep you safe out on the trail. I'm just struggling with these tight turns these slow corners, getting the grip, leaning back into the tyre so it grips up that hill. This stuff is teaching me valuable lessons about the lean of this bike. And you can do this on any bike on your normal trail. I love that little route there, it's really cool. Let's see if I can get a bit of a figure of eight going. So higher this time. I'm going to see if I can come down the other side of that tree. Oh, I don't think I'm going to make it. Let me see. No, I'm not going to. Right, so I've got to go higher, but see how I'm working out my lines, handling this route. I'm going to go wider here. Yeah, done it inside that line, coming from this route from the other side. Up round this log, lean in, get up high, up on the camber. I mean, this stuff is so technical for this bike, but it's so much fun. And you know what? I feel like I'm learning really valuable skills. So. If you're going out for a short ride, I mean, just finding a simple little loop like this that's got some technical terrain, some roots and some rocks can be so useful to your riding. A short ride doesn't necessarily have to be about fitness. It can be about bike skills and enjoyment. I mean, I think I could do laps around this tree all day long. I'll definitely do a couple more, that's for sure. So is going for a short ride worthwhile? I mean, maybe in your lunch break, or maybe you've only got a certain amount of time, or that you don't really fancy really busting yourself on a great big cross country loop. You know what, riding doesn't have to be about getting tired. It can be about having fun. Now I'm out on my local loop and I found a couple of trees just to lap around, just so I can have a bit of technical skills training and learn the grip of the ground, test my tires, 
basically learn some stuff. Now, there's lots of cambers, lots of logs, lots of rogs to play with, uh, and I'm really having a good time. And it makes me think that just going for a very short ride is worthwhile. I mean, I'm just trickling around, but I can add a bit of speed to it, and it starts getting more fun, which is rad. But as I trickle around, I realise that I'm learning an awful lot about this bike and getting technical skills I didn't have. So, on my little short ride, I'm learning an awful lot. What I want to do is see if I can do an endo and kick the back end around off this log here. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite got a front wheel grip for that. This section that I'm riding really is quite tricky. And I'm having a really concentrate to get the grip with the throttle not spin out because the moment I spin out I'm going nowhere I'm just going to stop on the spot but this bike has got some incredible torque so I can really get onto these climbs you probably can't see the gradient on the GoPro too much but sit back and the grip is phenomenal which I really do love and then once you've got it lined up you can let it go Well, I think that worked out pretty well, actually. It's a cool little section over there, really good fun. Um, it's slow speed. It's not the most exciting thing in the world to watch, but on the bike, I feel like I'm learning an awful lot. So going for a little short ride can really pay off. Uh, and I think I'm learning some technical skills that are gonna come in very, very handy once I get out on the trails. And in the end, find my way to that EWS round. <laughs> the mission continues. There we are. The mission goes on. It does. Well done, mate. Yeah, Looking good. it does. Um, yeah, oh, I'm having so much fun. So much fun. Right, okay. Caption contest time. Now, the um, eagle-eyed of you from last mm. week and uh, Carter W is probably the only one who commented on it. Um, we forgot to put a caption contest photo in last week's show. Ah. Cool. And Carter W says, uh, caption contest, when you forget to put a photo in next week's caption contest. That's yep. what happened. So, <laughs> Carter W, you are this week's winner of nice. the GMBM Flask because you spotted it and reminded me that we need to do a caption <laughs> contest. So, so here's this week's photo. Um, give us a caption for that in the comment section down below and you could be winning Carter W's GMBM Flask next week. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. These things happen, Rich, you know. Mm, yeah, we all forget a bit yeah. now and again. We all, we all do. Um, right, so let's have a look at what's coming up on the channel this week because we've got a busy one. Um, we've got some great videos. What are you looking at in this that fancy that takes your fancy, Rich? Well, there's a couple in here actually. It is how to find grip in any turn, which... Uh, yeah, well, that'll be fun. You know, it's not too nice out at the moment, is it, Mark? So actually trying to find a bit of grip no. on the trails could be useful. There's one more. The, the, we've got a, a Kushcore video coming out as well. Oh, on nice. Friday, oh. where we all got together and put Kushcore yeah. to the test on four different bikes, which I think is going to be really interesting. Yeah, that would be cool, actually. And that was kind of the first day, all everyone all back oh, in the yes. in the filming out on the trails. Yes, mate. Yeah, it was great. Very it was nice. nice to be back with everyone and hitting the trails. Yeah. And yeah, we got some. Just that's going to be a belter. It was. It was nice to get the invite. Thanks, lads. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, uh, we've got to keep going with the show because we've got a big bike vault to get through now, Rich. So let's take a look what we've got in the bike vault this okay. week. And our first bike this week is all oh, oh, nice. Yeah, don't see many of them. from Manny. Yeah, no, it's nice. Um, I like all the spoke, you know, the matching spoke yeah. and matching uh, stem and seat post and yeah. pedals. Sometimes if you match enough, it starts to work. It do, and that's a uh, lot of anodizing going on there. Yeah, that's an awful lot going on. Um, what else we got on there that's cool? Oh, 170 God, that, mil lyric. Dropper? Ooh, yeah. 170, 170 mil on that lyric. thing. Yeah. Yeah, and that is that a Fox dropper post on the back there? Oh, I sort of believe Kashima. so. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, Very it's nice. nice. What are you giving that? What are you giving that, Rich? Nice or super nice? What are you going That's with? a nice, that one. I like it That's a lot. That's nice. I like it a lot. Ooh. That's a nice. 
It's a nice bike. Set yeah. a good good high standard there on the first yeah. bike. I like that. You're going to have to try hard for a super nice this week. <laughs> um, right, Marco next with his Scott Spark RC900 team. Um, this is in South Africa. Um, beautiful view. Oh, Stunning, that, isn't it? Cool. Mm, mm. Lucky bugger. Um, it's a bit, bit, he's got it set up as a bit of an XC weapon, hasn't he? He's got the old high seat post there. Yeah, rigid seat post mm. as well. I think, yeah, yeah. that's what a rigid you, seat post. That's nice. That's really nice. It's not anything bad to say about that. No. It's nice. That's nice. Nice bike. Nice. Nice bike marker. Nice. And it's double double bottle holder on there, so serious riding. Yeah, it must be hot out there. Um, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Look at this. Wow. Wow. travelled back in time. Now there's a story to this. So this is John's uh, 1983 Ross Force One. Wow, 1983. It's older than me. That is crazy. Yeah. Um, Dad may be gone, but his memory lives on in spirit with this rad machine. Oh God, I'm, I can't read this out. I'll be crying in a minute. <laughs> I can't do that. There's a lovely story to go with this. Yeah, I like um, that. It's really great, but basically Ross is a, uh, uh, John has looked after this, Ross. It was his dad's bike. Um, oh, it's, a, it's an incredible, incredible condition. Um, wow, well, your dad would be proud, he John. Would. That is amazing. Um, you've just got to ring the bell, Rich, uh, basically. I, mate, just I was going to gonna say, because I'm also loving, do those look like gold rims yeah. on it as well? Oh, yeah, beautiful. Go for it. Big. There you go. Maybe maybe one of the biggest super nices I've ever seen. That's, that one. Yeah. That is uh, well well tended for. Yeah. Like nice that one, a lot. John. Congratulations, John. Um, next up, we've got oh lovely shot here of oh, wow. uh, an evil following from Johan. Very nice. Um, God, he's got. I love how we, he's he's just got the focus pull on that. Beautiful, isn't he? Has he's that is, yeah. that is nice. Some yeah. time went into that, didn't I it? Like it? That's a good one. Yeah. Good one, Johan. Yeah, that's. I reckon that's a super nice dude, isn't it? There we go. I like an evil. The bell has been um, rung. Standard. The standard is high this week in the bike vault. Um, next up, Jerome's Nuke Proof Scout Sport. Another Blurman, fantastic eh? photo. Mate, we got a Good bunch of pro, fo pro photographers watching. Yeah, these are, where these do all are the cyclists go? Um, uh, this is in Norwich in the what? UK. That is, that is not where I'd have said it was. No. Norwich. Um, discovered this poppy field while riding with friends. Uh, well done, Jerome. Nice. That's nice, nice. bike. New proof. Can't yeah. knock it. Very nice. Uh, next up. Oh, one of the new Radon. Emil's Radon. Oh, Radon? Radon? It's cool, isn't tomato, it? Tomato, tomato. Radon. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't know. I'd say Radon, but yeah, maybe you're right, Radon. Um, it's pretty rad. Is this the new one, is it? Yeah, 2020. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh. Oh wow! Pike on the front there. Yeah. Little, what's that? A little um, toe peak mount on the top there, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know for the old phone. Got a lot no, going on. No, that's a bike. what are those quad lock nice. things. It's a quad lock. Ah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. is it one of those? Oh, he, loves, he loves the twisty stuff because I think it's a twist lock bottle as well. Or what, is it fidlock? Oh, no, fancy. fidlock bottle. Yeah. Quad lock. Fidlock thing on the top. Ooh, a lot of locks. Yeah. Like the twist ons. Mm, yeah. Um, it's. I actually really like it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'm, let you decide, I'm reaching for the bell. I like that one a lot. Nice. Good job, oh. good job, Radon. Wow. Right. Next up, we've got Heath's Vitus. Vitus. Oh God, we're tomatoes oh, and potatoes all over the place today, aren't we? Tomatoes. What would you say? Potatoes. That's nice, mate. I like that. Well, I'm liking the red yeah. forks and the red pedals and bottle cage sort of tying it all together nicely. Looks good. Yeah. Uh, and are you Vitus or Vitus? I'm a Vitus. Are you Vetus? Oh, I see. I'd say Vetus. Really? Wow, I'm way off. I'm way off on all these names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say Vetus. Vitus. That sounds like a breakfast cereal. Anyway, uh, it's in Modesto, California, nice. and um, it is a nice. That's it's a, a nice, nice bike. Vetus Vitus. Um, oh, another <sighs> Gosh. classic here. Wow. This is Stefan Scott Comp Racing 1994 with a Rond Pro 3 fork on it. Wow. Yeah, and I'm a, would be I'm a sucker out. for a tan wall. Yeah, ah. See, now I don't like the tan wall you unless don't. you've got the tan grips. Oh. I like the If you've got tan wall and tan grips, I think it works. Oh, but, you're so coordinated, Mark. Uh, but, but you know what? On this bike, because it's kind of, you know, old school. 
I think tan wall looks good, you know. It yeah. works. I mean, it's got a little layback seat post on there, sort it of. It is, isn't it? Hinting and at look it. look at the length of that stem. <laughs> I feel like driving a bus. It's like, you it's know like, what I mean, oh. flopping around corners. <laughs> um, this is in Holland, so get yourself a pancake and a super nice, I reckon that is. Nice one. Good job. Stefan. Ah, oh, lovely. Oh, that's it. We're out of the bike vault. Oh, my God. We're out. That was a strong oh. ending. It was, wasn't it? That was a great bike mm. vault this week. I love it. When you guys send in your bikes, and we do get tons of them, so yeah. uh, I love that you get involved. But again, the upload is there for yep. you guys to get involved in this show. This is your show. It's all about what you guys are doing. <laughs> Um, so get involved. Um, Rich, we're, we're done for this week. It's, a, oh. it's sort of, it was flown by. It's absolutely flown by. Um, oh. But thanks for joining us this week. It's great yeah. to have you on the show, actually. Always a pleasure. Um, and, Love uh, it. Yeah, if you just make sure that the, the shed's nice and clean and tidy before you leave, that'd be great. It's not bad. Um, and, <laughs> and yeah, we will see you guys next week on the Dirt Shed Show. But until then, mm -hmm. have a great time. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. See you later, guys. Cheers.